The sun-kissed lake region of Ticino is also a destination for gourmets. Local markets like this one in Lugano show the strong influence of Italian cuisine on the food of this Swiss canton. Visitors can test that in the often remote and shady spots called not restaurants nor trattoria or tavern, but grotto. This is the Grotto Morchino. It's owned and run by Perluigi Olgiati. The dining room is small and simply furnished, as to be expected in a real grotto. A grotto used to be a place where people got together on the weekend, where they'd drink wine together and eat cheese and salami. Anyone dropping by here needs to bring along a healthy appetite. Even the cold cut platter is a challenge. It features local air-dried meat and rolls of bacon, salami, and various types of ham. This appetizer can also be ordered as a main dish. Of course, the grotto has every kind of pasta. And nostalgic guests can have their table wine served in earthenware cups, like in the old days. Ivan Sperandino is the chef. He knows what guests want. Osabuco, for example. That's a piece of veal shank first browned and then braised in an aromatic vegetable stock. It's served accompanied by the ubiquitous polenta. Our typical dishes are polenta and stewed beef, polenta with osobuco. We also have polenta with mushrooms. As you see, polenta plays a big role in our cuisine. The chef recommends potato gnocchi as a good dish to cook at home. To make it, start with boiled potatoes. Pass them through a food mill and knead them together with a little flour, salt, and an egg. Divide the resulting dough into small portions and roll them until they're as thick as a sausage. Then cut them into bite-sized pieces. And put them in boiling salted water. The Grotto Morchino serves gnocchi with tomato sauce amid a range of spices. But they're also excellent with a bolognese meat ragu or a creamy cheese sauce. The eatery is also open in the evenings. If it's not too cold, the staff will turn on the grill and guests can sit outside on the large terrace. Morchino is not just any old grotto. The writer Hermann Hesse made it world famous with a mention in his 1919 work, Klingzor's Last Summer. In one passage of his book, you can read that he came here, drank wine and ate bread and salami. The things you did back then in grottos. Hesse wrote, we found the grotto in a steep mountain forest on a narrow terrace where stone benches and tables amid the darkness of the trees. Per Luigi's family has owned the grotto since 1842. And Olgiati is always on hand to greet the guests, a tradition the family intends to continue.